Hi and welcome to the channel Southward Designs. This channel is dedicated to providing you with useful, easy to follow steps to make a range of things you might use in the workshop, the shed, the garage as I am, in fact anywhere in and around your home. I'm David and today I want to look at what is needed to set up your shed, your workshop or your garage. And look, this is my view and my opinion and you may have other thoughts, but based on my experience and what I found useful, this is the list that I've come up with for something different. And I know there are a lot of set up your shop for a thousand dollars videos out there. I want to look at this actually at three different levels, basic, intermediate and ultimate. And these are set at three different price points, which in round Australian dollar figures are $500, $1,500 and $3,000. This, I think it, it'll give you some flexibility around what your budget might be when you're setting up your workspace and, and what you can work around from a financial point of view too. So let's see how we go. So again, this is, this is my view and you might choose to set up with a different group of tools or you might prefer a different brand to what I've listed here. That's entirely up to you. Of course, just, just take these three lists as a baseline marker and then maybe work from there. Now in keeping with the different price points, I've suggested three different quality of tools and accessories, particularly the accessories as the budget levels increase. You may not want to spend a lot just starting out in case this is not a, a longer term hobby. No point in blowing thousands on stuff that's just going to sit unused for years. The other factor to bear in mind is your location. I'm in Australia and I've noticed that pricing for tools here in Australia seems to be a bit higher than say in the US or the UK. And this might be due to a smaller population in Australia or a whole rough raft of other factors. Now I generally shop in the Bunnings stores here in Australia. They're all over Australia they're, and for most of us they're pretty easy to get to. I've got two within the same distance, about five kilometers, about three miles away from where I live. An alternative is Mitre 10. And again, they're, they're pretty well everywhere around Australia, if that's your preference in terms of shopping. So for those of you that are based in the UK, there's shops like B&Q and Homebase, which seem to be the more often used stores for your hardware needs. And if you're in the US, then Home Depot or Home Depot, as we call it in Australia, Home Depot and Lowe's to name a couple. Look, as a, as a disclaimer, I'd like to use a lot of Stanley tools. I do like them and they're good quality. I'm talking about things like tape measures and dry, screwdrivers and that sort of thing. And it was also my dad's name. I also use a lot of Ryobi's tools that, and that's just me. That's my preference. Something I've done for years and years and years. I've got some Ryobi power tools that are over a decade old and they're, and they're still going strong, which is great. It's a good endorsement. I've got no specific affiliation with Ryobi. There's nothing financial or in any other way. I just like the brands. If you're starting down this workshop fit out path, I'd, I'd strongly suggest that you, that you find a brand that you like and stick with it. It just makes it much easier and much cheaper. And as you grow and expand your box of goodies, you'll find that that's certainly the case. I tend to buy the skin only tools. In other words, just the tool, there's no charger, there's no, no battery with it. As I've already got a couple of chargers and I've got a fair few batteries. And this just helps to keep the cost down, but also would, would only work if you stick with the one brand, obviously, over time. So the trick is to find something that you like and, and stick with that and then just build on that as, uh, as your needs increase. At, at the end of the day, you'll make your decision on what to buy, what brand, what tool type, etc., on your preference. But hopefully you can take this as a good solid base of a guide to, to build on from there. To make it easier and to save you having to write stuff down throughout the video, I've put the items in three lists in the description below, so you can browse through that at your leisure. And while you're there, just please like and subscribe to the channel. That would be really appreciated. Thank you. And feel free to forward the link of this video to anyone you think or know that you might like to find this sort of thing useful and interesting and relevant to them. So let's get going. Okay, so this first kit is the basic kit, the basic list of things that I've got laid out on the table here. And these are somewhere around $500. And again, it depends on location. It depends on which country you live in. It depends on where you shop. It depends on the brand. And like I said, I've got a number of Ryobi items primarily. And that's just been my, my preference over the years. So again, not exhaustive and, and not something that you want to be absolutely um, stuck to in terms of a list of items. This is just my view for what it's worth and it's hopefully there to help you to make some decisions on what you might get if you're just starting out in this uh, in this journey. Uh, first thing is um, is a uh, measuring square and this is a pretty basic one. It's um, I've got down on the list a Stanley one. This one happens to be Empire. 
it's got a good 90 degrees to it. It's uh, only a fairly small one, six inch one. Um, you can get them in different sizes. Um, but, uh, you know, anything up to 30 centimeters are probably worthwhile. Um, but this is good for, for just measuring off angles and, and getting things at, at square when, you, when you're building stuff. Next thing is a tape measure. And again, in terms of on the list, I've got a, a Craftrite tape measure. This one is a Lufkin, as it happens, it's just one that I happen to have in the box. Um, you want a tape measure that covers at least eight meters or 26 feet. Um, ideally, if you get one that's got both metric and imperial on it too, uh, one that one that stops like this, it's got a little clip on it like that. There's there's tons out there. You can pick them up for five, six, seven dollars each. I think the one that I picked out on this list was five or six dollars or thereabouts. Again, you'll get a better quality as you go on, and if if you look further at the other lists, you'll see some of the better quality items like better quality um, rulers and, and tape measures and that sort of thing. But uh, for the purpose of this, for $500, that it's, it's a good starting point. Next thing is a couple of bar clamps. Now, what I've got in this first list are different brands, but um, these are Irwin ones. So these bar clamps are pretty effective. You, you should have a couple of these, and my view is that you'd have one that's about uh, 12 inches or 30 centimeters, and one that's 24 inches or about 60 centimeters. Um, a couple of those, if, if you're looking at uh, your basic kit, um, the, the quality is not going to be as good as some of the heavier duty ones that you can get in the, um, in the more extensive and expensive kit that I've suggested. But from a starting point, and again, this isn't the one that's on, on the list, but I just in terms of showing you what that is, um, a, a bar clamp is something that's quite useful for holding two pieces together. You might be drilling or, or routing or, or whatever. So a couple of bar clamps are next on the list. Now, drills often come in kits, and, and again, this was part of it. I, when I first bought some drills, I bought two or three different drills in a kit and a whole raft of other stuff. But there's a kit that's a, a Ryobi combi that's a two-speed drill like this one here, um, and it's got a battery, um, again, not quite this size. This one's a bit bigger, and a charger. And for a kickoff kit to start out, it's pretty effective. It's pretty good. It, it'll do the job, and um, it'll certainly see you through a number of plenty of hours of, of good solid work in the shed or the workshop. Uh, this is to speed, it's pretty light, it's pretty handy. Um, you can get impact drivers as well and that's something that I've added in the subsequent lists. But I've just had this one screwdriver, um, sorry, screwdriver drill um, on, on this list on its own just to keep the cost down. You can, you can screw uh, screws in with this, it's not that hard to do. Not as effective as an impact driver but for an all around uh, you know, drilling holes into wood. Um, you're probably not going to be able to drill into walls like this. You need a um, hammer drill for that, which comes in a later kit. But for everyday use, this is pretty effective. It's got a clutch on it just here. Um, if you haven't seen it before, it actually uh, stops the... I'll, I'll just show you very quickly. I've got a battery, but um, when you're screwing in, and you get to the point where it's hit the timber, this clutch helps you to stop burring screws and breaking heads off screws and so on. Um, it's, it, a lot of people know about it, but you'd be surprised how many people I've come across that don't. Um, and, and again, you know, you can take it all the way around to um, drilling into, yeah, you know, using the drill function of it, um, you know, putting a hole into timber to be able to then put screws into. So a good quality drill, again, this is Ryobi, Ryobi, depending on how you pronounce it, with a battery and a charger, that's, uh, that's a worthwhile purchase. Next thing on the list I think that, um, that you should consider is a router. This is a small handheld router. It's again part of the Ryobi range. Batteries fit in quite easily. This is a bigger battery. You might use a smaller one for this, although it is quite power hungry when you, when you come to use it. This is a six and a quarter millimeter or about a quarter of an inch uh, collet. Um, and, and it's, uh, there's, there's a range of these that you can get. There's hundreds, literally hundreds out there on the market. But to kick you off, having a kit just to start you off is, is worthwhile. And that's the other thing that I've got. This is a 12 piece kit, but, but a six piece kit to start you off with a number of different designs. So you can do round over edges like I've done on this table. Um, and a whole raft of other sort of designs that um, that you can do with uh, with a router. It's it, it's pretty lightweight, you know. This is this weighs nothing at all practically. It's it's pretty adjustable. I'm just going to do a build in a separate video on a router table, and I'll be using this. I'll put a different plate on it, but I'll uh, I'll be using this router and a router table, and I'll I'll uh, bring that to you in a later video. 
but something like this or other similar brands on a marketplace are worthwhile. And last but not least is a circular saw. This is uh, quite a small one and, and uh, pretty flexible and pretty handy. You're not gonna get through massive pieces of timber with this and you'll probably struggle a little bit with hardwood because, because again, that's the, based on the, on the wattage of the item and, and also the size of the blade. You can see it's not a massive blade, but it's pretty easy to lift up, carry around. And again, you know, it's, uh, it's just another item that these batteries fit in and, um, and it just gives you a lot of flexibility. And again, from ease of use point of view, from an ease of use point of view, this is great. You've got a lot of adjustments here. You can decrease or increase the height um, of how far through the saw cuts. You can also set it to 45 or any other angle degrees if you need to. Um, so look, there's, what have we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight or so items on this list. It's pretty basic, but it's $500. That was a budget for this. And, and I think this will get you started. I've made the assumption that things like drill bits and so on, you'd probably have floating around. And if you haven't, you can pick up fairly reasonable kits for not much money. Um, and also things like screwdrivers, are fairly standard things that most people that haven't even kicked off doing this have, have got floating around as well. So these are the sort of tools that I think you need in this basic kit just to start off. And, uh, and this all together, when you, when, out, when you go out to the shop to buy it from Bunnings in Australia, is uh, give or take around $500. I think it was about 515 or thereabouts. Prices were very slightly depending on location and country, and you might be able to pick up stuff on sale. There we go, that's the first item group, the basic list. So that was the basic kit. Next, I would look at the intermediate kit. And this is give or take around $1,500. This is gonna fairly significantly expand because you're paying three times as much. It'll expand your, your kit that you've got, your tool box that you've got. So it includes everything that's in the first group of the basic kit, although I've looked at just slightly upgraded quality of, uh, of the various items. Uh, the first addition into this kit is a T-square. So apart from the uh, Apart from the measuring square, which is on here, the T-square is also very useful. Great from a checking of a, a right angle, 90 degree point of view. Uh, very well worth it. And having the two of those, two separate items is worthwhile. Still got a tape measure, that's fine. Again, at least eight meters or 26 feet worthwhile. And clamps, um, I've just uh, I've picked out another smaller one here, but having a range of smaller and larger clamps are worthwhile. You know, whether it's these tiny, tiny ones, these are um, 12 inch, 30 centimeters ones, um, going up to, uh, up to um, much larger ones, much longer ones, even little handheld ones like this are useful. You know, the hand clamps are pretty good and, um, and, and pretty flexible and pretty effective in, um, in use. So my view is you can't have enough clamps, um, although I've still got space to put a few more up there, but anyway, another story, another video. So clamps are worthwhile. I've looked at a slightly upgraded quality. These ones are medium duty bar, uh, bar clamps that, um, that are made by Irwin, that brand there. Um, now next in terms of drill, apart from the standard drill, uh, this one here, there's, uh, there's also an impact drill. This is one that I've had for many, many years. Um, and, and you know, it's had a lot of use. 2011, this was manufactured. So, you know, it's, uh, it's certainly had a good life. Uh, when was this one? This was 2011 too. I think I got these two in the kit. Now the impact driver is great for putting screws into timber, particularly into harder timber, a lot more effective than a standard driver. Um, it's got a different bit set up. It's, it's, um, it's certainly brilliant when it comes to putting screws in. And it's also useful to have the two because if you've got to go from drilling a hole and then taking the bit out and putting the screwdriver bit in and screwing the screw into the hole is a bit of a pain in the, you know what, um, so having one for screws and then one for drilling is, uh, is, is actually a lot easier. Um, and also in this upgraded kit, it's, uh, it's called a two-piece drill combo kit. There's an additional battery, so it comes with two batteries. Again, they're two and a half amps. Um, these are five, but amp hours, these are fives. But for the exercise, uh, two batteries and, um, and a charger. And the kits are usually good value, whether it's Ryobi or Makita or, or DeWalt or whatever your particular brand is, the kits often provide good value in 
getting you a number of items for a lower price than if you bought them all individually and separately. I'd certainly recommend doing that because it's an effective way of buying. Uh, what else is on the list? Uh, batteries come with the list, chargers come, in, uh, come with the kit. Um, the router is the next thing, and again, that was part of the first basic kit. Um, and and there's, there's a choice of different routers around, um, but I've, I've gone with this same one that fits the same battery group and the same portable, nice to, nice to use, easy to use, lightweight router. You might consider one that's got, um, there's, two, there's two collet sizes. And, and, and it just opens up more options. And again, it depends on how often you're gonna use them and what you're gonna use it for. So again, this might be something where you start off at the base kit and decide which direction you're going in, what you're gonna be making most of, and then you can adjust your tool selection down the track. Uh, route a bit set, and, and again, in terms of what I've found, I've suggested a slightly bigger set. Um, I think in this, in this uh, middle or intermediate list, I looked at one that was a 15 piece. This is a 12 piece, as I said before, um, but it gives you a good range of, of, of rounds, round over bits and a whole raft of other uh, uh, router bits that you can use for a, a number of different things. Uh, orbital sander, that's a new one. Um, this is, uh, this is a, uh, a, again, easy to use, handheld. It's pretty flexible. It's got a little dust collector here, which is quite effective and it's a little bit full. Might need to just check that it's not, uh, um, not in need of emptying. Um, these pads, uh, uh, they're everywhere. Uh, you know, you'll get them in hardware stores easily. Uh, they literally just, they're Velcro um, on and off. This one's a, uh, this one's a 80, uh, 80 grit. Um, so it's good for taking away larger bits of, larger, larger volumes of, uh, of material that you want to, but you can get them that are right down to a 240 grit, which is really, really fine. So that's a useful thing to have. Uh, next is, a circular saw which is also on the previous list and again very useful to have and you might be able to get it in a in a wider broader kit now the other thing that's that's in this list uh, that wasn't on the other list is this table saw table saw is going to make a big difference to how you work and what you do and it really opens up the flexibility and in in australia these aren't overly cheap it actually makes up give or take about a third of the overall cost of this kit but it will save you a lot of time when it comes to cutting in terms of you know, cutting timber quickly and efficiently as opposed to using the circular saw. So, um, you know, each tool has its own uses. This is great and, and um, I've just recently built a sled that, uh, that sits on the saw, which I've got just here. And that is just, that was a pretty easy thing to build. And that makes life even easier if you're, if you're gonna be cutting, um, you know, just to, to find, just to get a bit of timber, a bit of timber on that you wanna just slice through, you know, it's, it's great and convenient, and you know that you're gonna be cutting at 90 degrees. So the table saw is a really good addition to the kit. Again, this is, uh, this is a Ryobi one. It's not cordless, it's, it's powered. Has to be, because it, uh, it draws a lot of power in, in, terms of, in terms of the saw size and the wattage. Uh, but it's a really good addition to the overall kit. So we are effectively looking at twice as many tools um, that, that we had before in that first basic kit. Um, and you're looking at a fairly big increase in cost, probably an additional thousand dollars to what it was before. But I think it's it's certainly going to make a big difference in what you're going to be doing. This is a real big time saver. The two drills, you know, the amount of time that I spent when I had just the one, just or if I don't bring both with me, I forget to take one with me, and I've just got this one. It's like oh, you've got to unscrew the, the the driver bit and put the drill bit back in, and then take the drill bit back out and put the driver bit back in. It really is quite time consuming. And the clamps are a good thing too, because again, you can hold things together while you're screwing them or gluing them or cutting them or whatever it is you wanna, wanna do with, uh, with these pieces of timber. So that's the intermediate kit. As again, it's just increasing the cost um, a fair amount, but it's sitting at that $1,500 Australian dollar price point. Um, and it gives you a much broader range of tools in the kit than the than the first uh, that first basic kit does. So that's the intermediate. Next, we'll move on to the uh, onto the the full blown what I think is you know the ideal perfect kit. Let's move on to that one. Right, this is the ultimate list. A bit of uh, continuity didn't quite work. I'll just shut the garage door because it's uh, suddenly got dark outside. 
at 6.20. There you go, that's Australia for you. Miss those long summer nights in the, in the UK. Anyway, another story. So this is the ultimate list. This is the works. This is the full lot, everything. So very briefly, the stuff that we had before, we've got a T-square and we've got a measuring square. And again, just an upgraded brand, a slightly better quality. These are my ones, but you know, a better quality in terms of on that list. A better quality tape measure. That was a Stanley one that I put on the list. It's a Fat Max brand uh, is Stanley and it's 10 meters or 33 feet. Um, great thing to have, pretty usable, pretty chunky. Clamps, um, more clamps. And I've suggested a couple of six inch clamps, a couple of 12 inch clamps and a couple of 36 inch clamps. And again, as I said before, you can never have too many clamps. That's my view. Then we move to kits, drill kits. And again, again, a, a combination kit of not just drills, but a whole raft of other tools are a good way of, of buying things. So in this particular kit, the nine piece combo kit, that's a Ryobi, Ryobi combo kit, um, is a uh, drill driver. It's the one that we had before that I've mentioned, the impact driver that we've also mentioned, a reciprocating saw. That's this little beast here. These are really useful. They're um, uh, pretty, uh, pretty good at chopping down uh, uh, branches off trees, big boxes that you want to chop down if you've got a new fridge or a new TV and you want to chop the box down. It comes with a range of blades of, of different types. Um, we've got blades here for thin metal. We've got blades for medium metal. We've got blades for thick metal or heavy metal, if you're into that sort of thing. Then we've got nail embedded wood. And then we've got wood and metal. And then this is my favorite and the one that's got used the most because you can see it's got really chewed up is, is like a demolition saw. And they're, and they're pretty effective. They just sit in, the, um, in the, the end of the saw like here, battery in, and it just slides back and forward. This is pretty, pretty vicious, but it's a great tool to have. Still got a few wood chips in there from, uh, I think, a tree that I, um, or a branch that I chopped down on a tree. So that's a reciprocating saw. Very good. Next, oh, very effective, very useful. Um, next is a multi-purpose tool, this one here. This is, this is pretty good too. This is nice and lightweight. Obviously, battery goes in underneath. I've just fitted one little um, saw blade on here. You can see that it's a small, thin saw blade. Just slides, moves back and forward. There's loads of different heads than, and, and fitments that you can get for this, this multi-purpose tool. It's pretty good. You can get this little triangular disc that's got sand uh, that allows you to do sanding. The sanding pads go on the disc. Um, and it allows you to ride up into the corner as well with the pointy bit, technical term. Um, it's got a wider saw, a half or three quarter circle for cutting, um, a saw for cutting through wood. And I've got a load of others here too. I'm not going to go through every one, but this is quite a useful tool to have. And again, one of the ones that was part of the kit um, and, and certainly something that I would, I would use a fair bit. What I don't have here and I haven't had a use for it is an angle grinder, but that is part of the nine piece combo kit. And that's quite a useful thing to have as well from time to time. If I need one, I'll borrow one from a friend. Over the years, I haven't really had any need for an angle grinder, but it happens to be part of this kit, this nine piece kit that I'm talking about in this ultimate list. Um, you get two different batteries, a five amp hour, which is what this is, a five amp hour battery and a two and a half as part of the kit and the battery charger. You get also a blower. Now this is really good if you work in your garage or you're, you're working outside and, and you haven't quite got your, your um, dust collection sorted out, these blowers are pretty effective for, for blowing out the garage. Again, Ryobi battery in the back, pretty straightforward. Not super powerful like some of the petrol ones, but for a quick grab it and you know blow dust or dirt off the deck or off out of the garage or whatever, pretty good and part of this kit. So that's a blower that's part of the Ryobi kit. What else? Oh, a torch. I've, I've got it over there, but it, there's a little, um, a little torch that comes in the kit. Um, useful if it, if it gets dark all of a sudden, <laughs> like it did here. Uh, what else? Comes with a radio as well. I haven't got a radio. Um, I haven't really needed one, but that's what comes in this nine piece kit and a carry bag to carry all of that in. This is a really good way of buying a whole lot of tools, a couple of things you may or may not use, but in the main, these are tools. Did I mention the circular saw? The circular saw is part of the kit as well. Um, and, and you know, it's a good way of, of buying a whole number of tools, much cheaper than you would if you bought each item individually. Now, also in the ultimate list, I would suggest um, 
What else? I would suggest a hammer drill, something like this. This one I've had for a while. That went well. That's all right, it's just a blower. Um, so uh, hammer drill, I've had this one for a while. This was manufactured in 2011. And, um, and this is good for drilling holes in walls if you've got concrete walls or you want to drill through a brick or whatever. So this becomes the third drill out of the range of drills, the standard drill, the, the impact drill, and this, this hammer drill. Um, you probably can get a slightly more powerful one that's powered and not battery operated like these, but I've found that this has been pretty effective for, um, for pretty much everything that I need to do and, and use it for. So um, don't use it all the time, but it's a, it's a useful tool to have and, and makes that aspect of the job uh, a lot easier. Okay, uh, what else, what's next? So uh, batteries, charger, oh yeah, so batteries. Uh, I'd suggest getting a couple more batteries because you have a lot of gear here. Get the five amp hour one at least, if not more. Um, and uh, if you're gonna get this many batteries, you probably want a, a bigger charger. Now this one's a bit older, this one, uh, 2015, um, but uh, they've got a slightly different version of it now. But this is just a, keeps it on trickle charge, so you always got a, a battery at hand if you need one. Um, and it's good if you've got, what did I say in this kit? Four batteries, two that come with the kit and two extras that I suggested that you should buy. Um, so that's, uh, that's a good six port charger to have. Ryobi again. What else? Router. Uh, where's my router gone? Router's there. We've had that in the previous kits. That's fine. And a router bit set. But in this case, I've, I've looked at a 24-piece ultra router bit set that, uh, that's got loads of different uh, types and so on that, that covers a lot of what you might need. Um, and then next, orbital sander. That's, uh, that's quite a useful tool too. We've covered off that before, so I'm not going to spend any, any time on that. Circular saw. Oh, I'm, <laughs> I think I've got that in twice. Oh, it's part of the kit, that's why. So circular saw is part of the kit. Table saw, which is under here, that we've touched on before. Um, but the table saw is part of the ultimate kit that I've suggested. Um, uh, there's, what else? Oh, brad nail gun, this. So brad nail gun is pretty good. If you've got timber that you're, um, that you're putting together at, say, 90 degrees, and you've glued it and you want to hold it, you've clamped it, the brad nail gun is good to temporarily nail it if you're going to screw it afterwards or if you've got small pieces that you want to nail. Uh, when I did the video for this, this clamp holder, I just brad nailed this front section here. Um, and the same with this little section at the back um, that's just a raised bit of timber. I've just brad nailed and glued that to, uh, um, to rest this, this hammer drill um, bit onto. So the brad nailer is pretty useful. Um, I found that this is powerful enough, even though the, the, it's a battery operated, it's not a Ryobi piece but I found that it's powerful enough and, and uh, does the job. Uh, Brad nail gun, um, what else? Oh, now, uh, I actually um, need to add this onto the list, but I'll just make a slight amendment to the price. Uh, jigsaw is a really useful thing to have, and you might even consider this for the um, intermediate list as well, the middle of the three lists, about $100 in Australian terms, slightly more, I think, something like that. But jigsaws are really good for cutting rounds, um, awkward to get two pieces. If you're cutting a straight line, the circular saw or the table saw is great, but the jigsaw, or jigsaw is great for cutting um, curves, circles, a whole raft of stuff that, um, that you'll find useful. And I think this should be actually in the um, intermediate kit as well as the ultimate kit. And what else? Shop vac. Oh, um, sorry, there was another thing. There was a mitre saw. Um, so let's just clear the decks a little bit. Got stuff everywhere here. Uh, mitre saw is this little beast here and again you know do you need this as well as the tables as well as the uh, table saw look it's useful it's um it's great if you if you're doing um you know from a um, from a simplistic point of view it's it's good if you're cutting pieces of timber long lengths of timber bit of dust in here need to get my dust collection sorted out we'll come to that um but it's it's good if you're getting a whole you know raft of pieces of timber cut that are just long pieces. You don't want to use the circular saw necessarily. You may not have the table saw with you. Um, so this is quite useful for that. The, the mitre saw, um, pretty effective and, uh, and a pretty useful piece of kit. Um, and the final bit is, talking to dust collection, a sh hmm, sorry about that, <laughs> is, uh, is a shop vac. A shop vac is great. Um, and again, Ryobi, of course, because why not? 
Um, but a lot of the tools that you've got have got uh, capacity. So here on the back of the circular saw, you can fit the tube on to take the dust away on the circular saw. Instead of this little thing, this little pouch here, you could put it on the end of the, um, the orbital sander. You know, there's, uh, there's, there's benefits in keeping the dust away. Um, it makes a huge, huge difference. Let me tell you, on the table saw, you can fit that on as well. It takes a ton of stuff away. Routers, uh, where's a router gone? The router does have a lot of dust. That obviously has got no fitment as such to fit the, uh, um, to fit the shop vac to. But having, having the tube nearby and maybe clamping it where you're doing some routing, um, because depending on whether you're going with the grain or against the grain, if you're cutting with the grain, it chuck, <laughs> chucks out a ton of, uh, ton of um, shavings. So uh, that's quite an important thing to consider in terms of just keeping yourself not too dusty and wearing the right gear. And, and again, I haven't got the gear, you know, the safety gear in there. The assumption is that you've got that, you've got the glasses, you've got the mask, you've got the ear protection and so on. Um, so those are floating around just a bit further up, just out of shot. So look, this ultimate list is, is what I think is the ultimate list. Give or take about $3,000, uh, a, a touch more since I just added the, um, um, the jigsaw in that I hadn't put in before, but a bit over $3,000. Um, and you know, if you've got the money to spend and you really want to set yourself up well, and again, you'll spend less than that if you're in the States probably because things are, are, tend to be a bit cheaper. You might use different brands that I've mentioned before, a DeWalt or a Makita or whatever your brand of choice is. And uh, you might find that that'll be, that'll be uh, uh, different pricing, but, but again, you know, buying these kits are a very, very good, very effective way of getting a number of tools in one hit for a lot less than if you bought them individually. So this is the ultimate kit. This is the ultimate list. And there's a lot of stuff here. There's a lot of gear. You'll certainly, uh, this stuff I've just bought over many, many years. You know, it's not been something that I've just got straight away. It's stuff that you're going to build up. It's tools that you might find, oh, I think it'll be useful if I add this to my kit as well. Um, but this ultimate uh, list covers a lot of bases. If you think there are other things that, that are worth adding to this ultimate list, just make a comment below. That'll be great. So that's my suggestions. That's my thoughts on these three different types, these three different ranges. Um, and again, as from a disclaimer point of view, there's a lot of Ryobi stuff here and a bit of Stanley stuff here too. No sponsorship, no, nothing like that. It just happens to have been my preference and I've just bought the one brand. But I will say again, if you do start with one brand, stick to it so that you can keep the same batteries and, and just keep on getting the skins of the items rather than the, the whole item and the battery charger and the battery. You don't want too many batteries and you certainly don't want too many chargers and this six port one is, is great. But, but um, buying the skins is a cost effective way and buying the kits are a cost effective way. So I really hope you found this useful. I, I hope that you've um, taken something from this to be able to use yourself. If you're just starting out and, and you're really thinking about what do I need? What are the bare essentials? Go back to that basic kit. And if you've got money to spend, you can go to this ultimate list. And if, uh, um, if you're somewhere in the middle, well then you can get that, uh, that intermediate kit together in your particular brand, in your particular country, wherever you are. To, uh, to get yourself together a whole good, nice range of tools. So as I mentioned before, please like the video. If you like the video, please subscribe. That would be great if you could. And if you know people that might find this useful, then feel free to send them the link or send them to my, my um, YouTube channel. That would be really much appreciated. And look, thanks for taking the time. This is a bit of a longer video, um, but it covers a fair bit of stuff. Um, you've, you've seen the lists in throughout the video, but also they're, they're in the description below. So your list of the items in there, just to substitute your brand for whatever brand uh, you, know, you prefer. And uh, thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Cheers.